All right, so let's implement a little bit of validation so that we can't do this and just submit nothing. And like I said in the last video, we could just use HTML5 required um, attributes, but I want to make it a little more, I guess, intuitive or a little more custom. So what I'm going to do here is in the add contact component in the state, I'm going to add an errors object. Okay, and then what we want to do is when we make it when we check or when we submit, we want to make a check to make sure that the name is there and the email is there. If it's not, then we want to add an error to this object. Okay, so basically it will have a name parameter and or a type, I should say it's going to look like this. So if, if name fails, I want it to be like name and then a message like name, not main name is required. Okay, so it should look like that. If, if email fails, it should be email and then email is required. Okay, that's what I want this this errors object to to do. So in the on submit here, let's go right under where we bring in the state and let's say check fields or we'll say check for errors and we'll say if name is equal to an empty string. So if it's just submitted as an empty string, we want to set state. So this dot set state and what we want to set in the state is errors. We want to create errors as an object with name and name is required. Okay, so not too difficult. We want to do the same thing for email. So we'll say if email is equal to nothing, then let's do e let's make them all required actually. So email is required and then we'll also do phone. So phone, we want to set this should be phone. This right here should be email. Okay, basically we want the key to equal whatever the field is and, and you'll see why. So phone is required. All right, so we have our error checking. It'll change the error state if something goes wrong. And we also want to make sure that when we clear the fields in the form, we clear the errors as well. So we want to clear. We want to make errors back into just an empty object once the form is submitted and everything goes OK. So that should be all we have to do in the on submit. So now down here we need to implement. We have to basically pass in the errors for that particular field into the text input group. So it's going to have a new prop called error. So right here, let's go into text input group and actually let's pull out errors from state. So up here, let's pull out errors and we're going to say we want to pass in a prop of error and it's going to be equal to errors dot and then name. So if anything is in errors dot name, it's going to get passed in here as a property. Okay, same thing here. We'll say error equals and then anything that's in errors dot email. Okay, and this stuff won't exist if there's no errors. Errors dot email, errors dot name. If it does exist, then it'll have the message inside of it. And that's what we want in the in the text input group. So let's say error equals and then this will be errors dot phone. OK, so let's save this and now we need to go into our text input group and we need to basically accept that as a prop. So let's go here and add it error. And then we have to deal with it. So the way that bootstrap works is if you have an error, then you want to add the class of is invalid to your input. Okay, if I go and I say, and I'm just going to put this in here for now. So is invalid. Let's save that. Uh, oh, I put is valid and notice it's green, but we want is invalid and save. And they're all red because it's happening to all of them. There's no condition. Um, and then down here you could have a div with the class of invalid dash feedback like that and then you could put in whatever this is wrong. If I save this, 
you'll see that we'll get the little message. Now, if this class, if this input does not have this is invalid class, so if I get rid of that and I save, that message does not show. Okay, this does not show whatever is in here. So what we need to do is we need to have a conditional class name. We basically need to say if there's an error in that particular component, then we need to add the class of is invalid. Now React doesn't have anything in its core in its library to do that. So what most people use that that what I've seen most people use is a, a small uh, module called class names. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to go ahead and install that. So I'm going to just go ahead and clear this up and say npm install class names, which is very, very simple to use. And if you took my Mern for uh, Mern stack front to back course, then we use this quite a bit. It looks like. Wait a minute, I have 620 installed. Okay, it's telling me I need to update npm. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and do that. thought I had 6.2 installed, but whatever. Whoops, I need sudo. Okay, so anyways, we should have class names installed if we look at our package.json file. And there it is right there. So We want to bring that into the text input group. Let me close this up. We want to bring in class names. So import class names from class names. And then all we have to do here is go to where our class name attribute is. And we want to put this, we want to say equals. And we want to call class names. Okay, now. This is going to take in two things. It's going to take in first any classes that we want to apply by default. So no matter what condition and we do have those two form control classes. So we want to put those in here. So form control and uh, form control dash LG. We want those no matter what. And then the second parameter is going to be an object that's going to have the class name that we want. So is invalid. It's going to have the class name we want and then the condition that it depends upon, which in this case is going to be the error that's passed in. Okay, and then down here, we just want to make sure there's an error. So we're actually going to put an expression right here. and We're going to say if there's an error and and then we want to put this div. So I'm going to grab that and put that right in here. And let's see, instead of saying this is wrong, we just want to put whatever the error is. So we'll say error. Okay, so that should work. Um, since error is a property, we want to put that down in the prop types. So let's put a comma here and say error and prop types dot. And what is it? It's in it's a string, right? save that and let's open up our console. Okay, so let's try it out. Let's go ahead and try to submit. And that didn't work. Did I save this? So error errors dot phone. Oh, you know what I did wrong? is when we did when we do our check here we're we're setting the state but we're not do it we're not stopping it so we need to actually just return so for each of these we want to return out so that'll stop it so let's save that and try it again okay so we get name is required and it's going to do it one by one if i put my name in and then add contact we get email is required If I do that, I leave phone blank. We get phone is required. And finally, we can submit. Okay, so I think that that looks a little better than just using the required attribute for HTML5. So that's going to be it, guys. That's actually going to be it for this section. So what we're going to do in the next section 
is we're going to start to work with React Router um, because up to this point we just have everything on one page on one URL. What we're going to do is move the add contact to its own component. We're going to create a little about page. We'll, we'll move that to its own its own page as well um, because you need to know how to use the router. You're not always going to have just one page that does everything. You're going to have different routes. Okay, and we're going to be using React Router 4. So I will see you in the next section.